Good morning and welcome to worship, this being the baptism of our Lord. Uh, this is the only form of worship being offered today. I do want to let you know we are not offering communion as a part of this service, uh, no communion meditation and uh, participation. Uh, uh, we will not have any on-site worship this Sunday or next Sunday, the 17th. Uh, that means no uh, radio, no live stream, uh, no in-person worship. Uh, the staff has been exposed to the COVID. Uh, a couple of our staff members have indeed uh, become sick and have tested positive. So please keep the wise and borns in your prayer and pray that the rest of us did not uh, contract the virus as we were certainly exposed to uh, both uh, Joanne and Dana. If you have been exposed, if you have been around them uh, last week or even into this week, uh, we do encourage you to uh, perhaps self-quarantine and get tested. Uh, the rest of the staff is being tested uh, tomorrow and we will let you know how we're doing. Um, so with that, I ask that you keep us all in prayer and we'll do our best to keep you updated. Um, and so uh, just to let you know that uh, we are planning on returning to on-site and in-person worship on the 24th. Uh, we will have our mission spending plan review on the 24th between the two services at 8:30 or at 8 and 10:30, um, and then we will have our annual meeting on 31st. So those two events will be pushed back a week. Um, so the uh, mission spending plan. Uh, discussion is at 9.15 on the 24th. Uh, that is available to be a part of on Zoom. And then also our annual congregation, which was not available on Zoom, will be on the 31st. Um, God bless you all. Stay healthy, stay well, and do your best to stay informed. And uh, we now move into our worship. We continue as we live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Baptizing God. In the baptism of our Lord, Jesus is baptized to fulfill all righteousness, and through his blood we are joined to your pristine and eternal righteousness. In Jesus the Christ, O God, you fulfill your promise to your people. In holy baptism, you, Almighty Lord, call us and give us faith to be your children. In promise, you have baptized us in the Holy Spirit. In holy baptism, you, Almighty Lord, have received us and made us members of your church. In love, you continually immerse us in the Holy Spirit. As your faithful and spirit-filled children, may we live among your faithful people, hear your word and proclaim your word, serve all people following your example and strive for peace in all the earth. I ask that we observe a moment of silence, reflection, and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to us the entire forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray together the prayer for this day in which we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Together we pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful in their calling to be your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
this baptism of our Lord Sunday. It's from the beginning, literally the first chapter of Genesis, the first five verses. We get a chance in this scripture to actually put ourselves back in that time of trying to understand of, of how God's spirit moved over the waters. Hear the words today. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Here ends our reading. Our Holy Gospel this day, it comes to us from the Gospel of St. Mark. And I'm going to add a few, a few verses. We're going to go ahead and hear how Mark begins his Gospel at the first verse through the 11th. Again, we hear of the beginning. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. No one else than me. Mom, are you ready to be his friend? Yes. Try not to be that, that high up to be friends. I want everything to be low, okay? Okay. Just try your best. I I don't want you and my dad to be replaced and and me again. I want you and my dad to be placed and settled 
and be friends. I'm not trying to be mean. I just want everyone to be friends. And if I can be nice, I think all of us can be nice too. I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm trying to do my best in my heart. Nothing else than that. I want you, Mom, my dad, everyone to be friends. I want everyone to be smiling. Not like being mad. I want everything to smile. Especially when I see someone, I want them to smile. Especially Nana, everyone. I want everyone to smile. And if that's for my dad and you, Mom, I think you can do it. I think you can settle your your mean your mean heights down a little to short heights. Then it's both. Okay? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be a bully. I'm trying to be steady on the floor. Not way down. On straight. On the middle where my heart is. My heart is something. Everyone else's heart is something too. And if we live in a world where everyone's being mean, everyone's going to be a monster in their future. What if, if there's just a little bit of person and we will eat them, then no one will ever be here. Only the monsters in our place. We need everyone to be a person. Everyone. Including me and my mom, everyone. I just want everything to be settled down. Nothing else. I just want everything to be good as possible. Nothing else. Thank you, Tiana. Come give mommy chup chup. I love you. I love you too. No one. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart here this morning be pleasing and acceptable, we do pray. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Son of God, claimed, called, and brought forth. Amen. Today, it, it always amazes me, and I, and I know I've said this before, but it always amazes me how quickly the church operates and how quickly we move. It was just a couple weeks ago where we had the birth of our Lord, and then we had his dedication in the temple, and suddenly now fast forward to when he's an adult and 30 years of age about. And here we have what we have Jesus' beginning of his ministry. The beginning of where he made a difference in the world. He called, he claimed, he healed, he taught. But with all things, there had to be that beginning. The Gospel of Mark that we're going to be looking at this year has that beginning with John the Baptizer. That one who was preparing the people to receive the promised Messiah. In our lesson today, we hear that over again. He's only preparing the way for that ultimate baptism. That time when God's Son was going to be claimed and called. It is a beginning. Just as the passage in, Be in Genesis I love that. In the beginning, what was there? Huh. There was a wind and there was water. And out of that darkness, God created that sense of light. I don't know how many of you have been swimming. I hope a lot of you have been swimming. And, and there's something about that whole understanding of being underneath the water. You literally, and some of you have swam at night or in the darkness where you're under the water, you can't hear anything. It's like there's just a great big void. There, and you suddenly feel really closed in. Some see that as a very peaceful time of saying that as the water blankets you 
in the midst of that darkness. So oftentimes we hear about that. We hear about that understanding of what baptism really is as we are surrounded by the darkness of this water that cleanses us and calls us to where suddenly as we've run out of our breath that we've been holding, we go to the top of the pool and suddenly we're able to take and breathe that sense of life. Some churches... They talk about baptism, and some churches really do take it to that, shall we say, the next level, where they want to recapture that, that feeling of death to life. <laughs> and so I've often laughed, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't, but I will. Can you imagine Pastor Dan and I taking and taking the baptism into the holy pool, if you want to say, and literally drowning you and going, Ho, oh, in the name of the Father, count one, two, three, four. In the name of <laughs> and name of the Son, blah, 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 and, and the Spirit. And you're coming out here gasping and going, ah. But it's that same feeling of how you are changing your life. That is the point of what John was trying to get people to grasp. In that understanding of baptism, something is changing. Something in your life is transforming. Something is calling to you to be cleansed. And for John, that cleansing was in that confession of your sins. That new life, that new understanding, that new passion. One of the interesting things is, is each one of us have heard this passage about Jesus' baptism. Books have been written on it, libraries filled, about what it was and what was Jesus' reaction and all of the various understandings of what this did. Was he really a sinner and that he needed to be healed by John or forgiven by John or what? And each gospel has their own little twist on it. But for me, you hear how Mark understood it. You hear how Mark took this Son of God, this Jesus of Nazareth, baptized him, and Jesus comes out of the water with that realization of his calling, of the ministry, of now it was to begin. There's a process in God's madness, we know. There's a process that comes from believing and knowing how we have been called how we have been living out that understanding of God's promise through that water that was either poured on our head, sprinkled on our head, drowned in our body if we did a full immersion. All of it only is a dedication to God. Because remember, God is the one who can forgive. God is the one who cleanses us. And God is the one who claims us. Over the years, we've talked about Jesus' baptism. And in this opportunity, we finally get a chance to perhaps reflect on the baptisms that we've seen, the baptisms that we've experienced, the baptisms that as we see people baptized in the church and the sanctuary, our minds immediately go and are reaffirmed how God called us and claimed us through the water and this word. One of the things that, that I face as a pastor is that some people don't recognize their baptism. Oh, I know I was baptized as a kid. I didn't know what was going on, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. You don't have to. God does. God was there. God's word was there. God's promise was there. And one of the things about baptism, and I've dealt with people in various stages, and they basically, I tell them, is that they cannot deny their baptism. It's not in their power. You can't wash it off because it's not your action. 
It's God's. It's not even the pastor's. It's God's. Working through the miracle of that water that claims us and calls us. When we think about Jesus' baptism, so oftentimes we do have that, that film or movie running in our brain. That we picture the setting and the scene. And we picture Jesus walking down to that sea, to the Jordan. And perhaps John did, okay, everybody, as you forgive your sins, come into the water and I will be baptized. Did a line form. And Jesus was just in the line. I think either way, Jesus knew it was time. Jesus knew that God had sent John to prepare people's minds and hearts now to receive the words and the promise that God was going to give him through his son, Jesus Christ. That the way had been prepared to let Jesus in. Today we can go back and forth and up and around and, and whatever. But the promise is, is that Jesus began his ministry. He began his ministry. As God has claimed him, called him, and said, You're my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. And the irony is, Jesus hadn't done anything. But he was about to. As we continue to make it through this life, as we continue to make this journey that God has called you on, that God has called me on, with all its ups and downs and its challenges and the COVID virus and how to deal with that and not deal with that, all of those things continue to take and allow us to know that the journey is not easy. But God, through his blessed son, Jesus Christ, commits to us and says, you have been claimed. And you are my child, and I will not abandon you. Today we see that in Jesus. The beginning. The exciting beginning of the revelation that God gives to us through his Son. The caring, compassionate God. The forgiving, the loving, and the grace-filled God. The God that shows us that we need to be that person as well. Because we've got a good example. Today, as you hear the words, as you see the image, as you see the video, whatever, know that God is working through you, through you, to give your measure the promise to reflect His love. Be confident in knowing you have been claimed and called as a child of God, beloved, God says, I am well pleased with you. Amen. Almighty God, continue to fill us with the promise that is you. Fill us, O oh Lord, with the hope that sometimes needs to rise up in the midst of our despair. We pray, God, that you continue to hold us always in the promise of your love and your care. Help us as we make this journey of life that you have set before us. In your name we pray. Amen. Together we confess, using the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gracious and almighty Lord, we thank you for this day to hear your word and to consider our own baptism as you have indeed claimed us 
and in your claiming we are your children. And in that, Almighty Lord, we know that we have a peace that passes all human understanding. Almighty Lord, send us your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we thank you again for the many blessings you bestow upon our nation. And we ask, Almighty Lord, that you keep us focused on what is good about who we are. And keep us strong, Almighty Lord, as a people who indeed care and love for all neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, Almighty Lord, in our time of trouble, in our time of despair, in our time of illness, in our time of brokenness. We know, Almighty Lord, that in baptism there is healing, and we ask you continue to Please stir up your Holy Spirit within each of us that we may know that we are indeed complete and whole in Christ, in whole in mind, body, soul, and spirit. And when we are, find any of these realms broken, may you bring healing to our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious Lord, as we enter this new year, keep us strong, keep us faithful, Almighty Lord. Keep us in the Christ. Keep us in our baptism so that we, as we live out our lives in you, in faith, people may know the strength and truth that is in this world. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. May we now join hearts and souls in our minds as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh